It's been almost two decades since we started our journey to educate and help you take action so you may better manage your financial future. Our goal is to help you accomplish your life's purpose. This podcast reveals financial tips, strategies, and insights that will help you to set your financial goals and guide you along the way. This is Managing Your Financial Future, brought to you by the advisors at Lucia Capital Group. Managing your financial future and part of managing your financial future is taking a look at the dreaded T word. <laughs> Professor Plum, I can think of a few, but the one that uh, is going to get us that we're going to talk about a little bit today has to do with taxes and tax payments. And it's not even a four letter word. It isn't a four letter word. It's you can't turn tax or taxes, a three letter or five letter word. Uh, I'm Johnny Dean. I am your podcast host. I'm not the advisor, but I'm here with the advisor, or one of them, the top advisor, in terms of maybe seniority. Now, maybe <laughs> not. Are you at Lucia no. Capital Group? No. I can think of at least one that I think was here longer. Six months longer. Is that Janine Stripe? Yes. The illustrious Janine Stripe, who has been on this program uh, before. She's wonderful. I, I can think of few people that I enjoy more being around than Janine Stripe. So we're going to have to have her on sometime. Yep. It works for me, too. <laughs> uh, but anyway, but but you've been doing this for a long time, as I say in every podcast, but I think it helps to to establish that. And to, as we've said, you, you've you seen different tax rates. You've seen different tax codes. <laughs> you've seen different RMD rules. Well, I started in the business right after Tax Reform 86. Yeah. So I saw what it was for the 86 and then what it changed to in 87, 88. And then the changes that they made after that as well. I've seen quite a few changes since then. I mean, people talk about a flat tax. We had very close to a flat tax in 87. We had two brackets. One of them started, the second, the higher one started about the time the FICA tax br dropped off. That was about as close to a flat yeah, tax as we were going to get. That was right after the reform. Right after the yeah, That was part of the, yeah. uh, were, were capital gains also? They were the same rate. So, so they was, were the same. It was fifteen and twenty-five. They got they got wise after 15, that. Fifteen twenty-eight. Excuse me. And now we have what? We have a twelve. Uh, well, we've got a ten. We a have 12, a ten, a twelve, twenty-two, twenty-four, thirty-two, thirty-five, and thirty. Thirty-seven at the 30, top. Thirty-seven. Yeah. And then the the Irma and all that other well, stuff. Well, then you've got the net about. investment income tax that kicks in if you have investment income and your total income is more than two hundred single, two fifty mm -hmm. married. You've got the income related monthly adjustment amount for increasing Medicare taxes. All this you've stuff got has been the added. Taxation of Social Security. Well, that was the first rung of it had been added by that time, but the second rung of taxation on Social Security got added in ninety three. Yeah, all of this been, has been added for almost all of it has been added since nineteen eighty six. The, yeah. well, the preferential capital gains, the preferential qualified dividend, the, the classification of qualified dividend versus ordinary dividend and the different tax treatments on the dividends. Yeah, that's been put in, too. Yeah, so it's, it's been, as, as simple as it may have been back in 1986 <laughs> They or tried to simplify it, and they did a very good job of simplifying it back in 86. And uh, Congress just didn't like it because they couldn't socially engineer you well enough with that way. Well, you know, pe people tend to do better when they, they have more strategies. And I, I think in this case, we're talking about taxes. And what we're going to talk about here is taxes in retirement. Now, this this you, you said it's kind of scary for some people to think about taxes. Well, I mean, they look at what they're spending now. You know, they don't really know what their total income is because they know what their net check is, and a lot of people never actually look at their check stubs and see or their tax return to see what they actually paid in taxes. I mean, I've mm -hmm. asked many people. So, what did you pay in taxes last year? Well, I didn't pay anything. I got a refund. Well, getting a refund doesn't mean you didn't actually pay anything. It meant through the year you overwithheld or overpaid and you got some of it back. So the question is, how much did you actually pay in taxes? And very few people that I've asked can answer that question. Which is the way they like it. Yeah. If you don't know, you don't notice that it's a, you you don't know, notice how it, big it is. Which is why withholding is there. Withholding is there so that you don't know how much. Right. How many people, if we didn't have payroll withholding or quarterly payments. And you had to write a check. Uh, on April 15th. Or whenever, how many people would actually have the money left in their checking account to do it? Well, they wouldn't. And those, and, and but those who would have the money would just resent the heck out of this. <laughs> and so th that's there'd be just, withholding. There'd be just, absolutely that's why withholding. People hear that they're in the 22% tax bracket, 24% bracket. They're worried about taxes going up in the future. And they're saying, oh, geez, if I need, you know, 60,000 a year to live off 5,000 a month. Well, I need to bump that up by like 20, 25% to pay for taxes. Yeah. So I'm going to need another 12 grand 
for taxes. Not true, as well, we've discussed. No, it's not going to be. It, it doesn't affect you that way. So when people are looking at, well, that means I need 72000 for retirement instead of 60000 retirement. So there, remember, my portfolio needs to be X amount of dollars. Oh, and it needs to inflation index every year until I'm 107. So that what that means is I'll never retire. That means I have to have such a large nest egg at retirement, I'm never going to get there. Well, we're here to tell you that's really not, not the case. For people, taxes are lower than they think in retirement. It's yeah. Still high, if a little bit. I mean, or they, it's still a number. So you're saying they tend to overestimate. They overestimate their the, taxes. Right. Well, here, I can see why, because they might look at their portfolio, right? They see th- some a lot of pre-tax assets, 401ks, well, and, traditional IRAs. And a lot of normal people that get out to retirement, the majority of their money is in pre-tax, 401k, IRA type money. And that makes sense. Now, they may have some personal money, but they'll say, well, I've got stocks that have had some gains maybe over right. 30 years. And, and, and I, you know, if I sell those, that's going to be some capital gains, capital gains taxes. We've had a pretty good bull market run over the last you know 10 decade plus plus years and they, they they've got their home and they say well i bought my home 30 years ago and it's appreciated who knows how much i'm being uh, this is hypothetical but but this is what they look at and i think they tend to think well if i have to sell assets out of my 401 i have to take money out of my 401k taxable it's all taxable so they think that they as you just said that they have to have a much larger nest egg in order to fund for these taxes but professor um, as you said in many of these cases if not most it's 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 not true do they in general see a lower tax bill in retirement the majority of the people that i've worked with over the years do have a little bit lower, or in some cases significantly lower, tax bill in retirement than when they were working. Now, there are that is not an absolute. There are people that have a higher ta- uh, tax bill in retirement. I was mm-hmm. speaking to one yesterday uh, where they've done very well deferring, building, creating a huge t- IRA, and they have pensions and Social Security, and all they need to live is their pension and Social Security, but yet they've got this huge RMD looming. How may I ask? How huge? Uh, close to five million. Wow. Well, not the RMD. That's the no, no, no. <laughs> that's the that's the amount of the IRA. Right. So it's, and they're like, how do we, they they want to they want to try to do some tax planning, and that one's going to be tough. Um, but people have a million dollars, five hundred thousand dollars, whatever your number is. The majority of your money is in the four hundred one k. Unless you have large pensions, typically you're going to be in a lower bracket when you retire, even Uh, with it all in IRAs. I had this question. How are pensions normally taxed? Ordinary income. So it's as if you're getting a... A, um, it's not like you're getting a paycheck because well, there's no it's, FICA Medicare. Obviously. That's the difference. It's the same tax treatment from a federal tax standpoint as a salary check mm-hmm. or in an IRA distribution. It's the same as an IRA distribution. So okay. I mean, just treat it that way. It's just there's no FICA and Medicare. Like there is no FICA and Medicare coming off of an IRA. So, so for Social Security taxation purposes, those oh, it's, pension payments can will they will affect will, your Social Security taxation? They could potentially if it's if they're high enough. Oh, sure. Along yep. with everything else <laughs> that you have, even capital gains that at the lower levels have a zero tax bracket, yeah, that can affect your Social Security taxability. Oh, sure. It's, so it's, that I've seen that where somebody sold off something and had a ten thousand dollar capital gain, and they were in the zero percent capital gain bracket, and when they did their taxes, their taxes went up there by, you know, this was back in the fifteen percent day, it went up by about twelve and a half percent. And well, they're saying, wait a minute, why did I have to pay $1,200 on that $10,000 capital gain when it was a zero capital gain tax? Well, technically, you weren't paying tax on the capital gain. You were paying tax on some uh, right. some uh, uh, Social Security that became taxable that okay. wasn't before. Well, somebody's going to hear all this stuff. It's and complicated. They're going to say, well, Professor, you just said that generally taxes are lower in retirement, but doggone it. what? I mean, if my pension is taxed as ordinary income... Yes. It could wind up subs- uh, 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 creating taxes on my Social Security payments, potentially. So if I'm living off of pensions and Social Security, uh-huh. and I've got a 401k maybe that's helping to supplement that, how in the world can my taxes be lower, lower in retirement? You, are not, you don't have the same amount of income in retirement as you had prior to retirement. Let's say you had a $100,000 salary and you're living comfortably on that $100,000 salary. Gross salary. Gross salary. salary. Yeah. But out of that, you're paying $7,500 in FICA tax. So you're not spending $100,000. You're mm-hmm. not even being taxed. You know, maybe you're mm-hmm. being taxed on $100,000, but, you know, but then you're putting $15,000 away or whatever the number is into your 401k. 
and you're paying Medicare and some other things. And so, you know, you've, you're only getting 80000 75000 of that 100 to begin with, and then you're paying tax out of that. So if you're, only, if you're used to getting 75000 to mm-hmm. spend, or to, you're only going to be taking socials. Maybe your social's 30000 and you're taking 40000 45000 out of your IRA. So you've got 75000 of income. Now you're matching the same income. But even in that case, only 85% of the Social Security is taxable, so not all of that's taxed. Uh, this is you know, like a worst-case scenario. Even at that case, you're not paying as much tax as you were before. And so it, it all depends on where the money's coming from. Now, I was speaking to somebody last week, and they've been working on building their portfolio, but they've built it in multiple areas. They've built up a very nice tax-deferred account. They've built up a very nice personal portfolio. They've built up a very nice Roth portfolio. And they're actually doing the backdoor Roth we've talked about in the podcast before, where they're adding after-tax money to their 401k. Some people can do that. Not not everybody. but So they'll roll that to a Roth when they retire. And when they retire, they're going to have a, a decent portfolio, portfolio. And it's going to be about a third, a third, a third. Personal money that has capital gains or you know, interest dividends. Roth money that could potentially be tax-free, or will be by the time they retire in a couple of years. And tax deferred money. So they're going to be able to draw from all these different sources. Their cash flow will be equal to or greater than when they were working, but their taxable income will be a lot less. So it may be a good idea to have some varying types of money. Roth money, for example. Roth is not a bad thing. No, it's not for everybody, and it has to do with where you are on the income scale. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know some. I was speaking with somebody who, unfortunately, is getting a late start. They're about 50 years old, and they really haven't saved much for retirement. And they're they're not in the high wage world. They're they're in the moderates. I mean, they make you know 50,000 a year, give or take, you know, 60,000 a year. And when they retire, they're going to need you know. 3500 a year 3500 a month whatever they're not looking to make 150 200,000 a year in retirement they're looking to have 35 4000 a month in retirement so the question was should we be doing Roth IRAs or should we be doing traditional IRAs and for them the traditional IRA tax deduction still is going to make more sense because they can only save you know maybe 5000 6000 dollars a year and if you're saving 5 or 6000 a year even if you're doing it for the next 15 years you're not building up that multi-million, multi-million dollar IRA. You're building up a couple hundred thousand dollar IRA. You know, maybe 250, you know, ten thousand dollars a year plus the Social Security. So they'll be, you know, doing okay in retirement. But their taxes are going to be basically nothing in retirement at that level. So getting a tax deduction is still, even though it's only in the 12 percent bracket, it's still 12 percent plus state more than they're going to have to pay when they take the money out. And that's a completely different answer for somebody who makes 200000 So it's it's the difference between what you're paying now and what you're going to pay in retirement. Exactly. So the number itself doesn't matter. It's just which one is higher or which one well, is Well, and it depends lower. on how large of a tax-deferred account you're building, where the money's coming from in retirement, what you're trying to do. So so do you see the, the taxes in retirement issue being mainly if you've got a ton of pre-tax stuff and you wind up having to take at age 72 required distributions out of this these are are are, are these the targets that you should be looking at to potentially well, you, try to reduce well the question is you just said it a minute ago what is putting money into a tax advantaged situation saving me today and what is it going to cost me when i actually pull this money out if i can do it for the same, depending upon where I am, there are times where if I'm in a higher bracket, well, if I'm in a higher bracket today than I'm going to be in retirement, I'm going to take the deduction today and not do the Roth. If I'm going to be in a lower bracket today than I'm going to be in retirement, well, we do things a little bit differently. You know, I'll take the Roth so that I can avoid the tax later on. The question comes, if I'm in the same bracket today as I expect to be in retirement, which way do I want to go? And to me, that depends on where I'm at already. Am I already, am I in a really low tax situation now and I'm going to be in a low tax situation in the future? What about my heirs? Or am I already in a high tax bracket and I'm going to be in a high tax bracket and then I might want to build Roth more? So a lot of this is financial, but a lot of this is also emotional. How do we feel about which way we're making a decision go? 
Do I feel better about the deduction today or the tax free later on? So the reason is, since we were talking about taxes being generally lower in retirement, at least lower than you expected. Maybe it's, that's the that's well. The it's key. lower than expected for a couple of reasons. Generally, we don't have as much gross income that we're being taxed on, and B, you know, we tend to calculate our taxes wrong because we think we're in you know the twenty two percent bracket, and we just apply that to everything. And so if I, you know, if I'm making a hundred thousand, that means I'm going to owe twenty-two thousand in taxes. No, that's not the way it works. You know. And yeah, I suppose what you're saying is you, and you did say this earlier. Look at what your gross is, but look at what you're actually living on. Right. Look at what you're living on, and then we'll work the taxes up from there. Because if you make a hundred thousand, but you're after your health health insurance deduction, yep. and maybe that, you know, in some cases that could be a thousand a month. Who knows? After your uh, uh, FICA Medicare, your four hundred one k. I mean, you've reduced this down quite a bit. Well, the take home is what you're really going you know, to be. What am re- I? What replacing. am I spending right now? And what am I going to be spending in retirement? And that's the first thing. So, w- if I'm comfortable with what I'm spending right now before retirement, now. Everybody has different ideas about retirement. And so some people, their expenses are going to go down to retirement. They may not need uh, as many. Maybe they have a commuter car that they don't need anymore. So they're going to drop from two or three cars down to one car. Insurance goes down. Driving goes down. Uh, maybe they don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't go out to lunch and things like that. Mm-hmm. So their expenses just from going to work may go down. On the other hand, other people, maybe crazy people like me, when we have time on our hands. Dangerous. Oh, bad time. I mean, I, I just... I'm going to spend money when I have going to work saves me money because I can't go out and spend money on toys and other things and travel. And so I've got to consider what my expenses might be in retirement because uh, well, they might go up from what I'm spending right now. Well, do you see that a lot for people who are retired? Will they say uh, yeah, it's 50 50? <laughs> I mean, here's my take home. But now we're going to travel and traveling is not cheap. Right. So let's find out what we're not going to be spending on. Well, let's find out what we're going to be spending on. And for the first couple of years of retirement, expenses may go up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So let's, but it doesn't mean your taxes are going to go up dramatically. It may actually still be that you're you're not you know you're not spending as much as you thought, or you're not being taxed on as much as you thought. How do you reduce your taxes potentially in retirement? If if, if I'm staring at a good size four hundred one k. Um, and if I retire at 65, let's say I'm, I'm not mandated to take it out yet, but I will be mandated at in seven years. Um, do you, what, what's a good way to potentially reduce that tax bill <laughs> once those required minimum distributions hit? Because I think for some people, that's where they start to see maybe a little bit more in taxes. Is that Have right? Have you started with your Social Security yet or not? Uh, let's say Yes. Well, maybe you want to defer that. Take more out of your IRA for the early years. And so, if if you have a uh, uh, if you if you say, well, my between my pensions and Social Security, I'm good. I'm going to take my pension because it doesn't grow anymore at 65. Right. But maybe wait and take make take Social, which gives you more room to live off of your IRAs. Bring that balance down a little bit, or live off personal money principal. Oh my goodness! And principal isn't taxed, and then uh, convert. IRA money so that you have less of a traditional IRA, more of a Roth IRA when you get out to age 72. That's one way to do it. So the idea is to per, is, is to maybe try to get those uh, pre-tax monies out into the post-tax world by paying taxes on them now. Using Trying to find a way to use a lower tax bracket today. And in some cases, that may be deferring taking Social Security. Of course, you still have to have the reason to defer Social Security in the first place, which means you think you're going to live a while. Um, but So there are different things. And it's all a matter of pain today versus pain tomorrow. And so, so we have to look at what is my tax bill. Building the required minimum distribution into your spending now as if you were going to have to take it. So that you know you start using, I mean, a lot of people say never touch your IRA until you're mandated. In many cases, that's a bad choice. Yeah, we've, we've kind of debunked that and so in other podcasts. Let's see if we can use today's lower bracket up to the next marginal bracket or up to the IRMA, the Medicare Irma tax increase. Let's try to stay within the, those brackets and how much can we take without dramatically affecting our hit, our, our tax hit today? We talked last week or two weeks ago, I forget which order this was in, about when's a good time to take Social Security. I don't <laughs> think we mentioned necessarily waiting to take Social Security uh, simply to re- uh, for, for, for tax 
management. Well, and it may be that you're on the fence on how long. We talked about when to take Social Security has a lot to do with how long you might live. And so maybe you're in that you know, the push zone where uh, maybe mid 80s or so where there's no real clear advantage one way or the other. But being able to do some tax management it may push me one way or the other. It may push me to saying, well, then I'm going to defer so I can do some tax management. Well, so let's say I need 60 grand a year and 30 of it's coming from a pension and I'd planned at age 65 to take because I've got 30 of social between my wife and me, let's right. say. But I say, well, I got this IRA or I've got this 401k that's got a good amount of balance, a, a good balance on it. And I'd like to reduce that. Is it could it potentially be better for me to take 30 grand? I know I'm throwing a hypothetical, but well, with 30 and 30, a big chunk of your Social Security is already taxable. I mean, you're, you're, you're getting to the taxation now. You're not all the way through the taxation. So any new income that you show on your tax return, like a conversion, while it would be in today's 12% bracket, isn't in the 12% bracket. It's well, I'm be talking higher. about holding off Social Security. So if you were to defer taking at least one of the Social Securities, mm -hmm. now you even if you only have one Social Security, 85% of it's taxable, but it gives you a true 12% bracket going forward for a while, so you could do pretty good sized conversions. So I could take the, I could live off of maybe the the 401k money and and, and push Social so, Security so take, later on. Maybe maybe the Socials were 10 and 20, you know, mm -hmm. the two different people in the in the. So you take the 10 and you defer the 20 so that it becomes, you know, 28 by the time you retire, or 27 by the time you retire, uh, or not retire, but by the time you're 70. But now you've got more room. So you take 20 out of the 401k to live on at a true 12% bracket, and then you take, so now we're at 55,000, so we can, we got another 50,000 we can convert every year, and we start converting for the you know, next seven years, and you converted $250,000, and you lived on 20,000, that's another 100,000, now you turn 70, you picked up an extra seven or 8,000 in Social Security, and you got a Roth IRA that can help supplement and a much lower required minimum distribution. Well, folks, did you follow that? I mean, I <laughs> did because I knew where you were going. But but this is this you, is you said it's complicated, but it's fun for somebody like you. But in that situation, you were able to this hypothetical that I brought up just by tweaking a few things, you were able to potentially reduce this person's tax bill. Right. Now, I will tell you that I can't make that happen every time. <laughs> I've well, I gave you an easy... I've talked to some people that, uh, yeah, there's just nothing they can do anymore. They are going to pay the piper. Uh, whether it, And it's been at multiple different income levels. I mean, some of them at lower income levels, but they've already set themselves up where they're 70 now, their Social Security's yeah. kicked in, everything's happening. There's really nothing they can do to get out of the tax bill going forward without making it more painful in the early years. And that's not fun either. And some people have just deferred taking their required minimum distributions and they're getting close to it. Yeah, I mean, you could potentially the, the old rip the Band-Aid off. And, right. and, and it's interesting. You know, I was talking to somebody that has a very large IRA. and Is this the person you were, you were referring to earlier? Uh, yes. Yes. And, five, five mil or something. And so the question is, if they do any conversions now, they're going to increase their Medicare premium. And then when the required minimum distributions hit in a, uh, four or five years, they're, they're going to be at the top of the IRMA, the top of the, so they're going to pay an extra five grand or six grand a year in Medicare premium. That's an additional tax. For every year. For the they, rest of their lives yeah. because their IRA is so big. But, but if they were to convert it all in one year, they would go from a 24% bracket to the 37 for that one year. Yeah. But they would also avoid that extra five or 6,000 a year Medicare premium for the rest of their life. Which at age, you, 60, know, you know, 68. I they mean, could you live could live 80, 20 years, yeah. sure. You know, that's 120 grand right there, uh, give or take. And it could go up from there. Who knows what they'll charge in the future. So, I mean, this all comes into it. And now it's more of, how much pain am I willing to accept <laughs> today? I mean, they could do a conversion of the five million, and they'd have three million in a Roth after taxes. Yeah, that's a big tax hit. That two million dollars. But if they don't, they're going to pay at least two million in taxes for the, over the rest of their life with the RMDs coming out. Yeah, it'll just be in stages. It'll be yeah, it won't be it'll all be in at stages. once. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll, um, it'll slowly chew up their arm instead of just <laughs> hacking it off all at once. Do you get people worried that taxes are? I, I'm sure that I've heard this forever. They're worried that taxes are going to go up yes. once they retire, and they want to know well, what they Well, they're worried that do. taxes are going to go up in general. And for, for everybody? In general, for across the board. They figure 
taxes aren't going to go down going forward, at least from a static, you know, tax code type thing. Yeah. And, and I, I don't see taxes going down in the future. I mean, um, it depends on it depends on which bracket you're talking about. Right. Now, your income could go down without the tax brackets changing. Your income could go up without. So your taxes could go up without mm-hmm. the tax brackets changing. The the comments that I'm getting are they're worried the tax brackets are going to change and go up and go up. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, heck, if we don't do anything, they're automatically set to go up in about four years, five years. That's going to have to change. Yes, yeah. that that's that's from the 2017 deal. Right. Um, Tax Jobs Act. Uh, right. So those are even they in the sunset. Even in the somewhat lower brackets are right. are instead of the 12 and the 22 will go up to a 15 25. <laughs> what a great way to do it. Just have it automatically so that they, they don't have to so so that they don't aren't accused of raising taxes. Well, they can say we didn't do it. You didn't, we didn't do anything do it. to help it either. They, they they did it back. Yeah, exactly. They did it back then. So, uh, so but so people are worried about their taxes going up and they're worried about having to pay more in retirement, which obviously affects lifestyle it's an expense that doesn't go towards Mm -hmm. fun (laughs) well that's true and if somebody is concerned but you don't know where the tax bill is going to be how do you position yourself for say retirement if i'm concerned that i'm going to be paying more in taxes in retirement i mean we can go back to how much are you making now are you making a million dollars a year yeah you've got a target on your back are you making a hundred thousand a year you're probably not going to have much of a difference in the way your taxes are billed five years, 10 years from now as they are today. So the we can be a little bit more comfortable with the normal person rather than the ultra high uber rich person because taxes are going to change on that uber rich person. Taxes are oh, not, no I don't think they're going to change dramatically on the normal person. I don't see them personally changing at all on the quote unquote normal. You have the 10%, 12% and all that. Um, 22%. It can go, go back to the 10, 15, and 28, 25, 28. I don't see the 12 going up to the 15, personally. I don't see that. Certainly not. Congress will have to step in and actually do something to keep it at 12, which is why I think it'll go to 15, because Congress ain't doing jack. See, I don't see that. I see them being heroes and saying, <laughs> we are we are going to put this permanently. Well, I mean, tax cuts for ordinary folks tend to go over very, very well. Yeah. Uh, we'll if, see. A, if a tax jump happens because somebody other, you know, Congress allowed set it, it, set it up, but you allowed it to sunset and you allowed it to. to right. So, you, you know, you're getting blamed for it. So personally, I don't see that happening. We'll see. I see it happening. They can play with the 37 percent and the 35 and even the, the 33 as much as they want, because there are so few people. Those taxes. There's not enough voters. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, plus. But those you, are donors. If you're a. Well, that's true. But at the same time, somebody who's who's making, you know, who, who's paying 37 percent or whatever it is. They didn't get rich by just letting an extra two or three percent leave their pocket. Yeah, but it, they'll pay it. They it, it honestly they don't like it, but they'll pay it. It's it's just another expense. Yeah. So that's how I see it. But if somebody is there, any, are there other planning very quickly planning techniques uh, that somebody who's worried that taxes are going to go up can do? Not a whole lot. I mean, the whole idea is managing where you're at. Now, some people will say put it all into an annuity. I don't say that's a, that's that's not all into that does an is create annuity. That's all that does is create more tax deferred area you know it doesn't hmm. doesn't that's not saving taxes that's deferring taxes why would i defer taxes if i think they think if i think they're going to go up well i'm just talking what people are pro- proposing yeah, okay uh there's a lot of different schemes on things i haven't seen any that, re- that really work very well and it depends on where your tax bill is coming from you know is your tax bill coming from the mm-hmm. fact that you've got a huge ira well maybe you want to do you know stop contributing to the 401k and do roth contributions now and so you kind of slow the growth of that Maybe when you first retire, you defer taking, like we talked about. You, it's it's everybody's different, and that's so, the problem and the fun of this <laughs> because there is no one pat answer. But the bottom line is, in taxes generally, in retirement rather, generally taxes tend to go down. What I have seen is the amount of money that people pay in taxes goes down in retirement. Now, I will also tell you, people know more about what taxes they're paying in retirement than they do when they're working. Uh, because yeah. they actually see the taxes. <laughs> they see it coming out of their IRA distribution where they didn't pay attention to it coming out of their paycheck. Which I don't like to do. I'd almost I, <laughs> I'd rather personally just withhold it. Just just well, withhold. they're withholding it, but they but if you're dealing with somebody saying, Look at you know, well I'm taking a thousand a month out of my IRA. No, you're not. You're taking thirteen hundred out yeah. of your IRA. Yeah. What? 
Yeah, that other 300 is going to taxes or whatever. So they hear about the taxes they're paying more. You don't hear about that with your paycheck. You really don't. Ask anybody how much in taxes they paid last year to get back to your yeah. first point. H- how much did you pay in taxes? Nothing. Now I'm trying to remember what line it is on the tax return. To tax. I don't remember either, but you'd be surprised. Yeah, and just, there's a, there is a line that says this is your total tax. Total tax, yeah. And you'd be like, I paid what? <laughs> and that doesn't even include the FICA tax that you paid. I mean, that's just oh, the no, that's, that's the, just your income tax. That's the federal income tax and or state if you go to the state return. Oh, man. That, that that's not the total tax you paid last year. There are solutions, uh, potential solutions to everything, and I think it helps. Professor, you gave a complicated uh, kind of uh, scenario, a uh, solution to this hypothetical scenario that I brought up. But that's why you have somebody like Professor Plum who understands this stuff and and likes it. <laughs> I'm still wrapping my head around that. Something, I can remember tax code easier than I can remember somebody's name at times. <laughs> There's just something wrong with me. Which is all right. It's, it's when you forget things like birthdays and anniversary dates. Well, the only birthday I really try to forget is my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no one's going to let you forget that. I want to. Uh, you just had one, did you not? Yes. All right. Like I said, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're even deeper into that decade, aren't you? <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> You'll not. join me in this decade, not too far from. I now. will, but the good thing about age is, as soon as I join you, you're 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 even farther down the road. And let's hope I stay ahead of you for a long, for a long time. time, long time. If you need Professor Plum, you want to talk to him about tax management and retirement. It's a big, big topic. 800-644-1150. That's the number at Lucia Capital Group, 800-644-1150. He does this for a living. As I said, he likes it. Hey, Mikey, <laughs> he likes it. But it's good. You want somebody who likes this stuff, who, who really enjoys the challenge of saying, how can I get this person's taxes? The, how can I do this the most efficient way over their lifetime? Not just today. Right. Sometimes, to repeat, you so, may want to pay a little more today for less pain later on the rest of your life. That is a true statement. Um, it all depends on your individual situation. 800-644-1150. Talk to Professor Plum. He'll be happy to help you out or any of the Lucia Capital Group advisors. They all work under that uh, under that same umbrella. Go to luciacap.com as well. You should subscribe to our podcast. I want to remind folks you can go to Spotify and uh, find our podcast, download it, get it delivered every single week, and listen to your heart's content, Spotify. And we appreciate them as well. Out of time. I'll be talking next week about uh, home buying and all that stuff. Once again, that's another big topic. Uh, If you want to get in touch with us again, go to luciacap.com, L-U-C-I-A-C-A-P.com. Send us an email, and we'll see if we can answer them here on this program. For Professor Rick Plum, Certified Financial Planner, Professional, I'm Johnny Dean, your podcast host. Thanks for listening. We will talk to you again next week. The information provided should not be considered specific tax, legal, or investment advice and is not specific to any individual's personal circumstances. To the extent that this material concerns tax matters, it is not intended or written to be used and cannot be used by a taxpayer for the purpose of avoiding penalties that may be imposed by law. Each taxpayer should seek independent advice from a tax professional based on his or her individual circumstances. Different types of investments and or investment strategies involve varying levels of risk and there can be no assurance that any specific investment or investment strategy, including the investments purchased and or investment strategies devised by LCG, will either be suitable or profitable for a client's or prospective client's portfolio. Thus, investments may result in a loss of principal. Accordingly, no client or prospective client should assume that the presentation or any component thereof serves as the receipt of or a substitute for personalized advice from LCG or from any other investment professional. You should always seek counsel of the appropriate advisor prior to making any investment decision. All investments are subject to risk, including the loss of principal. This material was gathered from sources believed to be reliable. However, its accuracy cannot be guaranteed. The information provided is based on current laws, which are subject to change at any time. Lucia Capital Group is not affiliated with or endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any government agency. Social security rules can be complex. For more information about social security benefits, visit the SSA website at ssa.gov or call 800-772-1213 to speak with an SSA representative. Traditional IRA account owners have considerations to make before performing a Roth IRA conversion. These primarily include income tax consequences on the converted amount in the year of conversion, withdrawal limitations from a Roth IRA, and income limitations for future contributions to a Roth IRA. In addition, if you are required to take a required minimum distribution or RMD in the year you convert, you must do so before converting to a Roth IRA. IRA with Withdrawals will be taxed at ordinary income rates. Withdrawals prior to age 59 and a half may also be subject to a 10% penalty tax. Roth IRA distributions of principal from a Roth IRA are tax-free. However, any earnings will be taxed at ordinary income rates, and a 10% penalty tax will apply if withdrawn prior to age 59 and a half or within five years of the date the Roth IRA was established, whichever is longer. Examples cited are hypothetical, are for illustrative purposes only, are not guaranteed, and subject to potential federal and state law amendments. There is no guarantee that you will achieve the results discussed or illustrated. Annuities are long-term investment products designed for retirement purposes. Guarantees are based on the claims 
insurance paying ability of the issuer subject to their terms and conditions. Early withdrawals may be subject to surrender penalties and, if taken prior to age 59 and a half, may be subject to an additional 10% federal tax. Annuities are not FDIC insured. Certain terms and conditions apply. So please read insurance company materials carefully. Rick Plum and Janine Strike are registered representatives with and securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor and member FINRA SIPC. The investment professionals are affiliated with LPL Financial and are conducting business using the name Lucia Capital Group, a separate entity from LPL Financial.